Okay, so in this last section, we're going to look at um, transitioning from caret to tidy models. So again, caret's uh, been out for a while. Um, it's uh, really, it's matured. It's really well documented. There's a lot of users. So I still tend to use caret most of the time just because I'm, um, you know, I'm most familiar with it. I feel comfortable with it. And it is really powerful. It's, it's just a really good tool. Um, however, this this package is in the process of being uh, superseded by um, the tidy models environment. So, if you're familiar with the tidyverse um, within R, so packages such as like ggplot2 and dplyr, stringer, four cats, so they all follow this like philosophy, um, where it's like really readable code with like verbs that are very descriptive and whatnot. So um, that's really taken off in the R environment, and there's been an interest to try to pull um, modeling into that like environment and use that same kind of syntax and philosophy. So the creators of Carrot have um, worked to are working towards manipulating or converting that into a new set of packages um, that are collectively known as Tidy Models. Tidy Models isn't even a package; it's just like a meta package for like installing all these other packages. Um, so. Eventually, my goal is to transition to just teaching tidy models in the course, but I still feel like um, there's some reasons why you may want to just stick with Carrot. Um, so I'm I'm mainly teaching Carrot, but I, I have now added examples of using tidy models. So in this last section, I just wanted to provide some brief um, examples of how you use tidy models, and then there are some uh, you know modules in R where we go through some examples. Okay, so again, tidy models follows the tidyverse philosophy. So if you like that type of syntax, you'll probably like tidy models. Again, it's not one package, but a set of linked packages. So um, here are kind of some of the main components. So we have uh, parsnips, which is used for defining models and experimenting with different different models uh, for different problems. Yardstick, which I've mentioned several times in the prior videos, that's the kind of go-to one-stop shop for all of your assessment metrics for regression classification. So you can produce, you know, error matrices, accuracy assessment metrics, ROC curves, PR curves, error under the curve measures, um, R squares, root mean square error. Um, I think that's going to end up being the like dominant. Um, assessment metric library in R regardless of whether you're using all the other tidy models and tidyverse packages. Um, tune is for um, doing hyperparameter tuning. Um, so kind of replaces kind of the tune control process we were looking at with caret. R sample is for defining your data folds or, or bootstraps or your training and in, in in testing splits. Recipes is for defining pre-processing pipelines, like centering and scaling, normalizing. And then dials allows you to set up like um, values for different tuning parameters that you want to test when you run your um, hyperparameter optimization. I know there are a couple other packages too that I'll, that I'll mention later. Okay, so again, Parsnips is kind of the go-to for defining models. Um, they've created these functions for kind of broad categories of models. Currently, there's less options in Parsnips than there is with Carrot. That's why you may decide to use Carrot for certain tasks. Um, these are some of the common ones. So there are functions for setting up boosted decision trees, decision trees, GAMs, generalized additive models. There's logistic and linear regression. Um, MLP is multiple layer perception. That's effectively um, like uh, artificial neural networks. KNNs, random forests, and then different um, SVNs with different kernels, so radial basis, polynomial. Um, the general processing here is that you will use one of these functions to define a type of model. And then in here, I'm defining like the parameters. So instead of tuning the trees, I'm just saying use 500 trees. This is for random forest. And this tune is a placeholder for saying that we're going to try to tune mtry later. The set engine is what implementation of random forest or the algorithm that you're using or a method you're using you're going to employ. So for random forest, there's a couple options. So you have random forest and ranger. Here I'm using ranger. And then set mode sets the mode. So regression versus classification generally. Those are your two general options. Okay, so the pipeline is generally you know, define a model, 
pipe it into an engine to define what package you're going to use to actually do the calculation and then set the mode. Okay, and then again, recipes is going to be for all your data pre-processing. You so you can create these recipes or like pipelines for doing data prep. Um, so this is kind of the feature space engineering component of the tidy models environment. So there are functions for imputing missing values if you have null values or data gaps. Um, there's for for transforming individual variables like centering, scaling variables. Um, Discretizing numeric or continuous predictors like binning ranges to create like an ordinal variable from a continuous variable. Um, encoding categorical variables as like one hot encoding or dummy variables that's necessary for certain types of models, uh, not others. Um, generate interaction variables like some interaction terms um, that's common, like regression techniques like multiple linear regression. Um, normalize scale and center single predictor variables. Do feature space reduction. For example, you can use this to perform principal component analysis. Um, you can remove highly correlated variables. So if there's a correlation above like 0.8 or whatever, you can set a threshold. You can remove variables. You can also get rid of variables that have low or zero uh, variance or effectively there's no information. Um, here's just an example pipeline. So I'm defining a recipe here. Then the first argument inside of the recipe is the f is the formula. So basically I'm predicting cover in this case with all the other variables. Then the data that I'm using. When you set up recipes, um, it's really important to use the training data here and not the testing data because um, if you use the testing data to define some of these transforms, that's effectively a data leak and can then would bias your assessment. So you only ever want to show these pre-processing phases, the training data, um, not the full data set or the, or the test data set. And then that's getting piped into step normalize. There's this helper function here. Basically, this is saying all numeric. So it'll it's going to normalize all the numeric variables. That's just a shorthand instead of listing out all the variables. And then the I'm creating a dummy variable from all the nominal variables unless it's an outcome. And then I'm not. So that's what the negative outcome here means. So that's a pretty simple pipeline. Obviously, this can get pretty complicated. You can apply complete, like, separate chains to different variables. Um, I generally find that I don't have to do a lot. Um, something simple like this is generally um, good enough, but um, you may be in a different situation where you have to do a lot of engineering. So just as, again, a side note, there are tools for, like, um, pulling out portions of dates or determining whether a date is a holiday or something, creating other variables from like a, a date or a date time uh, field. Okay, uh, the workflows package is used to basically define a processing pipeline. Um, diff there's different components like pre-processing, data partitions, models, hyperparameter tuning, assessment, so on and so forth. Um, one common use of this is to create a pipeline that defines the model, that, that includes the model, and then the recipe or the pre-processing. Um, so here, there's, here's the, there's a lot of these add functions for adding components. So add a formula, add a model, add a recipe, add a workflow, uh, or define a workflow. So here I'm creating this cover WF, which is the variable. Um, so I'm creating a workflow. Um, within that workflow, I'm adding the model. So I'm adding my random force model and then I'm adding my pre-processing recipe. And then that workflow can be applied later on, and you'll see some examples of that here, and then also in the R module examples. Um, that can be good just for creating you know, consistent workflows where you can swap things out easily um, and you know, test a different model or change out some pre-processing routines. Um, okay, so Yardstick, again, is the tool for doing your assessment. So there's you know functions for classification metrics. So this confmat function creates a confusion matrix, um, at over accuracy, kappa, recall precision, f score, um, rc, error under the curve from the receiver operating characteristic, and error under the curve for the precision recall, rmsc and r squared for regression generate some curves. So here's an example where I have a model that's already been fit, so it's been trained. I pass that model into the confusion matrix. I tell it um, 
what so um, sorry actually this is the predicted value so this is like a set of predictions so i pass that into the infusion matrix and i tell it what the truth is from this data set it's basically like a tibor data frame and what the predicted class was and that will create an error matrix and i pass that into summary and that will generate a bunch of summary statistics or sets or metrics from the error matrix um, again, our sample is used for um, data partitioning. Um, so, for example, the initial split is used to define a training and testing split. Um, for hyperparameter tuning, you can set up v you can use vfold CV to set up cross validation and bootstraps to set up bootstrapping. So, here's an example of setting up a training test split. So, I have this object. And I'm basically saying I want 0.75% or 75% of the data to be the test data and the remaining will be, for, or sorry, the training data and the remaining will be for testing. And here's even stratifying it. So I'm maintaining it balanced on this categorical variable, which is what we're predicting in this case across the two partitions. And then to actually pull out those two data sets into separate tibbles or data frames, we just pass that object into training to get the train data and testing to get the test data. And so that's an example for a training testing split. Um, this is an example for setting up folds for like cross validation. So um, we give it the training data, five folds, and then we're going to try to maintain balance across the different classes by setting the strata there. Okay, uh, the tuning package has got a lot of functions and these are generally again used for hyperparameter tuning. So for example, the tune function, you can use that as kind of a placeholder when you define a model um, to say what variables or hyperparameters you're gonna tune. So, if, sorry, if I go back here to uh, parsnips, you can see we did that here to say that we were gonna tune the mtri parameter. Okay, um, define values for hyperparameters. You know, that can be done with tune grid. Fit resamples is basically training on the, on the folds to do the hyperparameter optimization. And then once you have all the results, you can gather those results up to view them, graph them, or find the best model. Um, and then once you have your parameters, there are tools to fit using the best parameters, finalize your model, finalize your workflow, or finalize your recipe. So here's an example uh, for tuning. So we, we have a workflow that's the model plus the, the pre-processing pipeline. We push that into the tune grid function. We tell it what resamples that we're going to use, which just would have been defined with, um, would, would have been refined with our sample. Um, what grid we're going to use, that's going to be the set of variables to try, and then what metrics that we want to report back. So that's kind of the tuning process. Um, there are a few other packages. Um, for example, um, dials is used for managing and defining hyperparameters, so like what variables that you're, or values you're going to test for different parameters. And then this broom package, which I, I haven't really show here or show in the R examples, is used for like summarizing and models and whatnot. Um, this is an example for setting up a grid, uh, so a, a regular grid. So basically we're going to tune the mtri parameter. We're going to use values from 1 to 12, and we're going to try six different levels. So that um, RF grid then can get fed into the tune grid function here to do the hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so in this last slide, this is just kind of a summary of the workflow that you use with um, with uh, with tidy models. Um, and then again, there's augmentations of this. You know, it's not 100%. Uh, you know, there's different ways to approach it. This is just kind of a common workflow example. So you'll read in and prepare your data, you know, read in tables, whatever, um, do your data prep. Um, you'll define a model with parsnip. That includes those, the engine and the mode. You can define your training te test partitions with resample. Use the training and testing um, functions to kind of split those out. Um, then you can define a recipe to do your pre-processing uh, feature space engineering pipeline. Uh, take your model and your recipe, your pre-processing recipe, and combine that into a workflow. Then you can de define your assessment metrics using yardstick. 
um, define your folds using uh, uh, with, for your resampling. Use hyperparameter tuning then uh, using dials and tune and whatnot. Then once you have your hyperparameters, um, you can select out the best model, finalize your workflow, and then fit that uh, model to your data and validate on your predicted data. Last fit will actually uh, train on the training data and then also validate on the prediction, the, the, the withheld test data. And then you can collect your predictions and then collect your metrics and assess your model. Um, this is showing kind of the end phase of this workflow. So once we have the tuning done, we can put, we can create the final model by pulling out the best parameter. So here we're saying we want to get the parameters, the hyperparameters that provide the highest accuracy. Um, and then once we have that, we can finalize the workflow. So we uh, push our work, we we use our original workflow, and we push this finalized model with our hyper our chosen hyperparameters into it to create this new final workflow. And then we fit it. So um, we push that workflow into fit last. We tell it what the data split is for the training testing, the metrics that we want to report, and this collect predictions is going to spit back all of our predictions for the test data. Okay, so that was a quick kind of overview of tidy models. Again, we're going to go over examples, a few different examples of this um, in the R modules um, using some, some real data sets. Um, so hopefully it will make more sense as you actually see it in practice.